Amen. I'm reading today from the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, and, and verse number 26. And I know that we've taken just a bit of time, but I'm gonna, I, I've got a little thought that I'm, I've got a big thought that I've got, but I'm going to try to c condense it. And uh, the Lord spoke to my heart and this week, and I, and, and I can't get away from it. Pray that the Lord will help me to present it the way that he has given. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Uh, two words that capture my attention in verse number 26, where God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And God, and in verse 27, so likeness and image seem to be closely tied together. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. Pray, O oh God, that as your word is anointed, that same anointing will fall heavy upon us here today. Touch every heart and every life, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. There is what is a, a, a biblical principle that talks about in the, word, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I'm going to take it very quickly. If you hear it, it's, it's, for instance, it would be like me telling Larissa, uh, I need you to do this for me. And I tell her to do something. And, uh, and I come the next day and it's not done. And uh, if it's really important to me, I would say to her, I told you yesterday to get this done today. Uh, I heard that from my parents. Uh, that's a parent thing. And, uh, and uh, then if she doesn't get it done that day, then the next day I'm a little bit more firm about it and, and I tell the person three times. It's that same thing. I told you this is the third time. In Scripture, when something is mentioned in at least two to three times, it's God's way of saying, set up and take notice, there's something I want to tell you. I mean, it's just, it's God's way of saying, like a parent does, I need to tell you something and I need you to understand what I'm saying. When I was reading this passage of Scripture through in Genesis chapter 1, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And then in verse number 27, he said, God created man in his image. And then I stepped over to the book of Genesis chapter number 5 and verse number 1. And, and it starts it out with this statement. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man. It would have been enough if he would have just said in the day that he created man. But again, God put emphasis upon this. In the likeness of God made he him. He made him in the likeness of God. Stepping off of the ark after the flood in Genesis chapter number 9 and verse number 6, we read again. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. He makes this statement three different times in the image and in the likeness of, in the image and the likeness of God, he made man. It's in that same context that we begin to read through the law. 
And in throughout the book of Exodus, Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you will read these words. Don't have any image. Don't make any likeness. Don't make any image. Don't make any likeness. I don't want any God like the heathen have. I don't want there to be anything like the heathens do. And and uh, and and, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take it fast because I know that that I that our time slips by very quickly. God created man in His image and in His likeness. The reason why He gave the command, "Don't make any other image or any other likeness," is because if there is a likeness, there is something within our nature we want to be like something else. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to mention names because I, I might hit something that's too old. But uh, uh, there are, they call them... Uh, idols among the movie industry and there are idols among the sports industry and there are idols among the music industry and people will dress and they will act and they will try to be like as they emulate that person Oh, uh, my, 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 just to kind of give you an illustration, my wife went to college with a lady that thought that another singer was just the most phenomenal thing since sliced bread. And she imitated that lady to a T. And she could, she could just about sound exactly like her because that's who she thought was great now the, it was a it was a Christian singer that she was emulating but if we're not careful that that God said don't let there be any other image I uh, I think it's funny whenever somebody says uh, I want to be like so and so and then and they start changing hairstyles and stuff as if that's going to make them like them and uh, but God said, I want you not to have any other image. The reason that he said that is because there is one image that God wants us to remember. There is one likeness that God wants us to be like. It's that image of God. Now, I'm, and I'm and I'm. I'm going to try to go fast, but, but it, and, and today, by the help of the Lord, we're going to speak in God's image. In God's image. In Psalms chapter number 17 and verse number 15, the psalmist makes this statement. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness, and I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness in other words David said look there's been a lot of stuff that's happened from creation until now and I know that my likeness isn't like the likeness of God I know that my reflection isn't the image of God but I also believe that my likeness can change and be like God. I also believe that my image can change and I can be like Him. There's a song that says, To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus on earth, I long to be like Him. And, and truly that is, our, that is our desire. From the book of Romans chapter number 8, and, uh, and so with that thought in mind, 
The Bible said in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, there is a scripture that says, great is the mystery of godliness. That is not trying to figure out how many, how many beings that God is. The mystery of godliness is how the great God of glory, or why and how the great God of glory would robe himself in a human body and come and dwell among us. Why would God choose humanity to be his dwelling place? He should, if it would have been in our mindset, the least that he should have stooped to would have been to the realm of an angel. And why even stoop? Because you're God and you have everything. But God, amen, in his divinity, in that almighty God, he stooped to become, the Bible said, in the likeness of sinful man. He took the nature that David was talking about when he said, I'm not perfect, but I would, I would be rejoicing if I could come into his likeness. David said, where I'm at is a sinful man. That's why he would say in that other psalm, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice and hide thy face from my sin. In other words, David was saying, I've got a likeness that's not like God. I've got an image that doesn't look like God. I've got a likeness that doesn't act like God. I've got a I've got thought patterns that aren't like God's. I've got habits that aren't like God's. But what I want to do is I shall be satisfied when I change into His likeness. And the only way that that could happen is through what we read in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 3 where He said, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. When He was nailed to the cross, hallelujah, what He did at the cross was give us the opportunity of once again stepping into a realm where we could have the likeness and the image of God upon our life. We were fashioned in His likeness and in His image. God intended for us always to have His mind, always to have His heart, always to have His desires. It was never in God's will that any should perish, but it was always His will that we come to repentance. I thank God for His truth. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. From the book of Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 5. The Bible said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Amen. He, uh, he, he took on him the form of a servant. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But as I look at that again, amen, the reference is made. He took on the form or the likeness of a servant. He took on the fashion, amen, or humbled himself, amen, and he took on the likeness of man, amen. God said, I've got to robe myself, amen, in a body and become like man so that man can be like God. I've got to robe myself, amen, in flesh so that man can comprehend that from the beginning it was my intention that man be in my image and in my likeness. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we step back and just for the sake of, just for just a moment, I'd like to read, amen, that first verse, amen, and, and, and uh, 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 Philippians chapter 2. If therefore, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the, of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. He said, this is the same mind that, that I want you to have. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem each other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So he said, I want you to understand the mindset that the saint of God should have. He should have a mindset of mercy. He should have a mindset of love. He should have a mindset, amen, that as, as a group of believers, we're of one mind and one accord. We are in one thought pattern. We want to see the gospel fulfilled. We want to see folks saved. We want to see the lost reached. We want to see folks repent of their sins. Amen. And let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each, each esteem each other better than themselves. And then he said, let this mind, the mind of the lowly, the mind of the humble, the mind of love, the mind of mercy, let it be upon you. Let this mind be in you, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That mind that was there, amen, the thing that brought him down, amen, to our level. Let that mind be in us, that when we allow his mind to be in us, we become in the likeness of God and in the image of God. For his mind, hallelujah, is something that brings us into his image and into his likeness. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28. The Bible said, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. I like that scripture. That's one of my favorites. But I want to continue to read. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them also he justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. I'd like to step into the fact that when God calls us, there's a change that God wants to make in our life. Amen. There's some things that God wants to do. Amen. It goes back to Romans 8 and verse number 1 where he said, 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Amen. Or actually, uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1, where he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Don't fit in, amen, with the likeness of the world. Don't fit in with the image of the world. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let that mind be the image of God and the likeness of God. Think like God thinks. Think with love like God would think. Think with mercy like God would think. Let the mind of God be in you. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh, hallelujah. From the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15 and verse number 42. So also there so also is the resurrection of the dead. Amen. He's talking about that our hope is beyond just in the flesh and what we have in the flesh. The flesh is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, but it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. Hallelujah. What he's talking about, amen, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. What he's saying is, is is that when we come to Jesus Christ, there's a new likeness that we, amen, become conformed to. I'm no longer looking like the world. I'm no longer thinking like the world. I'm no longer acting like the world. But there's some things that happen within my life. I've been sown into corruption, but I'm raised, hallelujah, into incorruption. I was sown in dishonor. The world of sin was nothing but dishonor. But I thank God for the day he filled me with the Holy Ghost and he put honor within my life. It is sown in weakness. Amen. This old flesh has nothing in itself. But when he got a hold of me, he raised me into power because I'm in his likeness. My power comes because I'm wanting to be like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is sown in a natural body and is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. It is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, but the last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first was spiritual, amen, but it was natural. Afterwards, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. Amen. As is the, as is the earthy, so is they that are earthy. As are the heavenly, such are they which are heavenly. Amen. Now we have... And as we have borne the image of the earthy, so we also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. He said there's a natural body amen that is going to go to the grave if the Lord tarries but there is a spiritual body that will never ever die. Get into the place where the image amen is the image of God amen because when you take on his image and his likeness never die never be weak. Hallelujah you have victory over sin you have victory because there's been a change in your life. No, oh, hallelujah. Amen. You were, hey, you are of the flesh, but you are more of the Spirit. Don't walk after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit because you're not in the image of the earthy, but you're in the image of the heavenly. Amen. The image of God. Amen. In verse number 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Amen. 
but we shall all be changed. He's saying the reflection of the inside that makes us into the image of God, into the likeness of God, the thing that has changed us, amen, so that we are no longer, amen. You know, we used to sing that song, oh, don't look for me to go where I used to go before. I don't go there anymore. I found a better way. Don't look for me to say all the things I said before. I don't say them anymore. I found a better way. I found a better way, brighter paths for my feet. Amen. I, my heart rejoiced so sweet. Amen. I found a better way. And since I found the church and I found a place to pray, there I found the Lord. I found a better way. Amen. There's a change that He makes within us. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I heard the story about the alcoholic that had turned his life around and somebody, somebody was joking with him and said, uh, Oh, so did your God again turn the water into wine? He said, no, he didn't. He said, but he did, but he did turn, turn my alcohol into a paycheck. And he did turn my broken home into a home that was that was healed. He turned all my sorrows into joy. Amen. He he he's done so much. Amen. But but God said, Amen. We shall all be changed. Hallelujah. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and then and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. He said, here's where victory comes. It comes from the person that's been living for God and is in the image of God. And yes, the flesh died. Yes, the flesh went into the grave. Hallelujah. But when death swallowed up that flesh, out of that death, hallelujah, came incorruption. Out of that body, hallelujah, came immortality. Amen. Yesterday, amen, it was nothing but a moral. Yesterday, it was nothing but in the corruption. But today, it's incorruptible. And today, hallelujah, it's immortal. It'll never die. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. He said, It'll, death was swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Death, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. He said, I just got to explain to you what, what the problem is. The problem is, is that death's only thing is sin. That's its sting, is sin. That's the sting of death. It's sin. The strength of sin is the law. He said, you, you got to understand, whenever you take on that divine nature, amen, you're not in the corruptible, amen, you've got a different mindset. You're taking that image to a different level. I'm not in the image of man. I'm in the image of God. Amen. I'm not in the likeness of man. I'm in the likeness of God. I'm reflecting God's image. Amen. That saying that has been, uh, um, unfortunately, I think, abused. Uh, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Amen. People, I heard about the fellow that went into uh, the uh, Christian bookstore and he kept seeing that WWJD, WWE. And so finally he went to the clerk and he asked, he said, what does that mean? He said, well, he said, it means, you know, what would Jesus do? He said, what do you mean? He said, well, he said, Did you ask yourself before you make any decision in your life. You ask, what would Jesus do in this circumstance? And he and the fellow said, really? He said, that's what you're saying? He said, well, I don't think you're going to sell very much. And the guy says, why is that? He said, because when I see the price of that tie, and I say, what would Jesus do? I think Jesus would rather me put it in the offering than to buy that tie that looks ugly. You know? <laughs> it's a different mindset. 
It's not just about a tie. It's not about a hat. It's not a little tie pin or whatever else there might be out there that would say WWJD. But it's a way that our mind is, is, is operating. We're not thinking the way that we used to think. Amen. We change things. And, we, and, and as, we, as we change, the Bible said that we grow from glory to glory and from grace to grace. We're stepping this. Amen. Amen. Am I perfect yet? No, but I've changed a little bit today. And tomorrow, whenever I take another look, he'll show me a little bit more of his reflection. And I'll be a little bit more like him tomorrow. Whenever he shows me a bit more of his image, I'll be a little bit more like him. Hallelujah. Amen. So... So he said, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us, amen, the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God he has given us victory. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Oh my. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 14. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, he said, there's a difference between us and the Jews of the Old Testament. They look at God's glory through a veil. But he said, because they didn't want to change the way that they lived. But we all, with an open face, uh, beholding as in a glass the glory of God, of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Lord. He said, when you want to change, God will show you His image. He'll show you His likeness so that you can change and be like Him. It's not something that He wants to hide from us. He's the one that created us in that image. He's the one that made us in His likeness. There's nothing more that God wants than to say, here, want to see how you're supposed to look? Look at me oh hallelujah want to know how you're supposed to think here I am hallelujah want to know how you're supposed to talk listen to me hallelujah amen because as we talk with him and as we walk with him amen the image changes I have I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed the times whenever I've been able to be at the Tuesday night prayer and uh, because it, it, it's teamwork together, and uh, and we're praying together, Amen. And and uh, and I know we have our private times, but man, it just feels good to pray together as a family, and uh, and it's, it's a good feeling. But uh, and but it it gives a time of reflection. It gives us a time to think, Amen. And and the more that we pray, Amen, the more we see His image, and the more. I say, oh, I see there's something else I need to deal with. Oh, <laughs> well, thanks, God. I'll, I'll improve on that. If I, wasn't, if I wasn't in prayer and he spoke to me about it, I probably would <laughs> bow up a little bit. Wait a minute, God. Hold on. Wait a minute. You, you mess with something. That, that, that's mine. <laughs> when I'm in prayer, I'm, I'm stepping into his image. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I submit to that. I listen to you. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse number verse number one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. 
If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the that's the light, and it won't back up here just a minute. Whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, because, because he doesn't want them to see the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, because, because if they see that, they see the image of God which should shine unto them. If they see the image of God, they'll want to be like that image. And, and, and the God of this world says, if they ever see it, they'll never want to go back. I want to blind them so that they'll never see His glory. If I can get them hidden from the image of God, if I can keep them from the likeness of God. And God said at the beginning, He mentioned it three times, I made you in my likeness. I made you in my image. I made you in my likeness. I made you in my image. I, 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 there's a, I fashioned you for a purpose. I want you to be a reflection of what I am. Hallelujah. And the God of this world says, oh, we, don't want to, we, we don't want you to see that because if you see the image of God, it'll shine into them. For we preach not ourselves with Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sakes. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light and the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And then he said, but we have this treasure. We talk about the treasure being the Holy Ghost. Truly it is. Let me tell you what the treasure is a little bit farther. We have this treasure, the image and the likeness of God in earthen vessels. What is that image and likeness? It's His Spirit that lives on the inside. In my, in my own nature, I might be pastor, but if I if I let flesh have its way, we'd all be in trouble. But he said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. That's why whenever... Whenever there's any anointing that falls, I understand. It's not me. It's the image of God that's shining through. If there's anything that's done while somebody is singing, it's not them. It's the image of God that is shining through. If there's anything, anything that's done in witnessing and somebody comes to God, it's not them. It's the image and likeness of God. He started it at the beginning and he fashioned us in his likeness and in his image. And I have that treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Praise God. I won't read... Let, let me read real fast. First, uh, Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you to desire that you would be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, be fruitful in all good work and increasing in knowledge of God. Strengthen with all mine according to his glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. You know what he's saying? He's saying this is, this is the image of God. He said you're going to walk worthy. You're going to be strengthened with his might. You're going to have his knowledge. You're going to do good works for him. It's according to his glorious power. You're going to have patience and long suffering with all joyfulness. You're going to give thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us. I love that word. Translated us. That's a change that's taken place. Amen. From the, amen. Unto the kingdom of his 
his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created uh, that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, or all things were created by him and for him. Amen. He said, he is before all things and, all th and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell, having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Amen. He said, I, it's by him, I say, whether the things on earth, amen, or whether they be things in heaven. He said, it's by him that there's, re there's a reconciliation. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy unblameable and reprovable in his sight you know what he's saying He's saying, you can't do it by yourself. You had to have the blood of Jesus. You had to have Calvary. We had to be, amen, we had to have him die at the cross. We had to have him resurrect from the, amen, from the dead. Because by him and through him, our nature changed. Amen. And until, until the cross, no one, amen, from after Adam could ever reach to the image of God. But because of the cross, oh, hallelujah, I can step into a realm where I can be holy. Amen. In his presence. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 5. Amen. Said, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness. And he lists off all the things that, that are evil. He said in verse number 8, he says, Get rid of the anger and wrath and malice and blasphemy and filthy communication. Don't lie one to another. But in verse number 10, he said, Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. He said the new man is renewed in knowledge. Amen. There's a new thought pattern. Amen. It's not a thought pattern of whether I'm Jew or Greek or circumcised or uncircumcised. He goes on, amen, to say, put on, verse number 12, therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. He said, get rid of the things that, that are of the flesh and start putting on, amen, that divine nature. Put on God's image, the image of, of holy and beloved, bowels of mercy and kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called into one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God by the Father, uh, by Him. And so we, so we look at the passage of Scripture, and He said that He created in the image of God, male and female created He Him. Male and female created He them. In the image and the likeness of God. So intentional that God just said, look, I want to repeat it. Understand the reason that I don't want any other image or likeness. Because I don't want you to be like the world. I won't want you to be like anything else. If you get another image in your mind, if you get another thought in your mind, amen, it's not my image. And you'll try to be like that instead. There's an old song as we stand together today. There's an old song that says, To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. On earth I long to be like Him. Hallelujah. I want to be like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.